Hi, Misha here, and mostly because I just enjoy j talking about Japanese firearms. Been kind of revisiting and doing some guides, and I don't know, just talking about various setups. And we did a buying guide 101 talking about the rifles, and in that I promised I would get to the carbines. So here we are tonight. On the table, I have four. And, uh, they're all very similar in dimensions, even from this one here. This is the original carbine, as it were, the Murata Type 22. Then we have the first Arasaka carbine. This is the Type 30. Then we have the most common and heavily produced. This is the Type 38 carbine. <clears throat> and then we have the, the oddball of the group. We have the Type 99 carbine. Again, none of these are new. We've done videos separately on these and, and other mixes, but that's kind of the, the fun part about guns. You can always revisit them and new things, so hope you join me. Really appreciate it if you could discuss your own carbines in the comments below. It's always fun to see variations. Well, with that said, we'll get started. The Murata... Type 22 rifle it was a first for Japan. Now the initial Murata, the Type 13, was adopted in 1880, the 13th year of the reign of the Meiji Emperor. It was really the first domestically designed and made gun, although it took a lot of inspiration from European ones, but it fired an 11 millimeter smokeless round. An improved version was known as the Type 18, but with the Type 22, Japan finally got in, well not finally, it was pretty early, got into the smokeless powder game with a new small diameter cartridge. It was 8 by 53 rimmed Murata. The rifle and the cartridge were adopted in 1889 and the rifle had a 8-shot tube magazine also a first and a barrel of about 29 and a half inches and for the first few years that's all they produced but in 1894 they introduced the carbine here and it was extremely similar to the rifle, except it had the sling swivels relocated to the side. Doo, doo, doo. They also did away with the checkering found on the rifle. It went to a much shorter barrel of about 19 and a quarter inches and no bayonet mount and the magazine tube capacity was reduced to five because of the shorter barrel otherwise it was the same gun even with the straight bolt handle These were issued primarily to cavalry, artillery crews, and other second line units, as well as some NCOs and quartermaster types that were just needing more of a defensive gun. 
But they were not in production very long. By 1899, the last Muratas left the factory. Just over 100,000 were produced in total. Of those, only about 15,000 approximately were of the carbine. Keep in mind the rifle was made twice as long and of course was a more necessary weapon. They would see some use in the Russo-Japanese War, but they were already getting phased out in favor of newer models. And by World War I, they, they were either just retired outright, turned into trainers, perhaps issued a second line guns. But really, because the 8mm Murata was unique, the cartridge itself was unique to this, that, that was pretty much it. And that, of course, gave way to the Type 30, Arasaka. This was a wholly different design, the Arasaka, from the Murata. It went to an even smaller diameter cartridge, 6.5 by 50 semi-rim. The rifle would have a 31 and a half inch barrel, internal vertical five shot magazine, and the original Arasaka was very inspired not only by Mauser but also by the German Commission rifle and a few other early generation smokeless guns. Having had good experience with the Murata carbine, they put a Type 30 carbine into production really at the same time they did the rifle. So it had the same features, hook safety, same internal five round mag. Ah, it's hard to do for me. Okay. Right. Sorry guys. There we go. It went to a shorter barrel at around the same length. Some sources say 19, some say 19.2, some say 19.4. You get the idea. Under 19 and a half inches. It has a bayonet lug. Takes the same type of bayonet as the Murata, although often bayonets were not issued. It had a cleaning rod under the barrel, like the long rifle, just of course shorter. And the Murata, by the way, it stored its cleaning rod in a trap in the buttstock. And like the Murata, the sling swivel on the Type 30 carbine was moved to the side. It had altered sights, a shorter rear, and they introduced protective ears for the front because they knew these would be used for, by cavalry and others that might be banging them around. And they did not have hand guards, at least they did not mostly seem to. I've heard some bills say there are variants that came with hand guards, but the ones I've seen, which admittedly are not that many, did not have hand guards. Upper hand guards were, of course. They made. <clears throat> about 550,000 rifles and Type 30 carbines they built 45,000 give or take but like the Murata before it the Type 30 would be in frontline service and thus in production for a relatively brief period of time Already by 1905, it was being phased out in favor of the Type 38. It was still very much in use in World War I, but by the time of World War II, most Type 30s were either retired, made into trainers. Actually, a large number had been given as foreign aid to Russia and England, and many found their way to Finland, but anyway. And again, the carbine very much just reflects the rifle, but shorter. Also lighter, at about 7 
and a quarter pounds, and overall length about 38 inches. So a slick little handy gun. But it would be replaced by the Type 38, which was Nambu's contribution, where he essentially redid the whole Arasaka design from the ground up, still firing the same 6.5 cartridge. But now we have a sliding dust cover, a simpler, easier to use safety. We now have a full length upper handguard on the carbine, protected front sight, cleaning rod, bayonet lug, side single mount, a slightly upgraded rear sight. But you get the idea. It too had the same barrel length of 19 and some change and received the same treatment. And much like the Type 38 rifle, there would be differences between early and late production. And these would actually be made at least at four factories. Originally, we had Tokyo from the beginning of production in 1906 for the Type 38 carbine until around 1930. They would make the most. Next we would have Nagoya who would begin after Tokyo left off. They would actually make a large number two. Nearly as many as Tokyo would have. After that we had Kokura. They made around 50,000 right before and at the beginning part of World War II. And then the Mukden arsenal on the mainland would produce a little over 50,000 around the same time period as Kokora. Since at least four factories made these in over quite a long time period, the changes would come much like with the rifle. For example, you would have some with a peep rear sight made late instead of a notch. You would also have some with the later style concave safety as opposed to the sticky out bit. <laughs> and you would have some later on with the cupped butt plate as opposed to the flat style. Just little things. And of course, guns were rebuilt over time as they saw service. So you can have an earlier gun that acquired some later parts during an arsenal rebuild. Because these were rebuilt and reissued. They were very popular. They, uh, they issued them to the same usual suspects that you would think of. Cavalry, of course, when mechanized units came into vogue. They would be carrying them. Now, I do not have the Type 44 on the table, which was the dedicated carbine version that they made over 90,000 of. It was very similar to the Type 38, but different. And the reason I don't have it here is we've recently done a pretty full video on the Type 44. So if you'd like to hear about it and the three variations and what really separates it from the Type 38 it spawned from, Check out the playlist. We should be able to find the Type 44 videos we've done in the past there. Well, what about our last one on the table? It's a little bit different than the others. With a bit of an unknown story. This is a Type 99 in carbine configuration. Which is a bit of an unknown gun bit of a mystery. Like the standard Type 99 short rifle and Type 99 long rifle, this fires the 7.7 millimeter round, 7.7 .7 by 58 rimless. And originally when they did the Type 99 they were going to do 
a long rifle and a short rifle, a short carbine, excuse me. But they had recently converted a number of Type 38s to a short rifle configuration with the 25 inch barrel, often known as cavalry rifles. And not really seeing an advantage to having a long rifle and feeling that the 7.7 .7 did not perform great as a carbine, they axed that and just standardized on the short rifle. So that's what was produced, except for around 38,000 long rifles early on. But at the end of the war, during the last ditch phase, some odd stuff happened. Did a video quite recently looking at various last ditch guns and pointed out some odd things that happened then. Now we know for a fact that during the run of what we know today as the Navy Special, some late Navy Special guns had a 21 slash 22 inch barrel done more to conserve on steel than anything else. And there have been reports of field modified guns with barrels as short as 12 inches. Probably guns that got damaged at the front of the barrel and they just cut them down. But then there are a few guns like this that pop up that appear to be a factory gun with the 19 inch barrel give or take. This is very clearly quite a last ditch gun. Typical last ditch features. Again, you can look at that video if you haven't. It's just the barrel happens to be shorter. Could this be a fake? Sure. But the question is why? This is out of an old collection. If it was done, it was done very well because the barrel does have the step down for the front sight base. And then it's pinned back here for the front barrel band as you normally would. The wood is flush with the uh, barrel band. I don't know, it's just one of those one of those oddities. If someone did it in America, why? It's also possible that the arsenal in Japan had some barrels that were rejected because of flaws towards the muzzle. And so they just cut them down and made them that way. Again, done a video on this. At the very least, this shows you the size and what something in the Type 99 configuration in carbine form could have been like. Even though they never went past the prototype stage in 1939-1940. And it continues on the whole light and handy aspect that the Japanese really favored. Of these on the table, three out of the four are quite uncommon to rare. As you can imagine with the Miratas, with only a handful made a long time ago and most of them having seen hard use. Let me get the other right one, sorry guys. <laughs> Today they're just not a common sight. Of course, you can't find 8mm Murata ammunition anyway, but if you could, finding a gun, you can find the rifles somewhat, but the carbines are not a common occurrence. Likewise, Type 30 carbines, while more common, are still not easy to find because they were used a lot and then a lot given away and a lot just destroyed during combat and so on and so forth. My point is with these two, price is whatever someone's asking and someone's willing to pay. However, because they produced over 500,000 
Type 38 carbines, they're pretty common today. Now, for whatever reason, most of them are missing their chrysanthemum. So if you find one that's in a really good shape but no mum, I wouldn't reject it. That's just me. No mum isn't a deal breaker. It's always nice to have, I admit, but I think because a lot of these are battlefield pickups and whatnot, they were just small and handy and soldiers could grab them. Now there is to the type 100 or type 1 version of the type 38 carbine which was a folding stock. It had a side folding hinged stock but only a few hundred of these were made and fakes are rampant so if you see one Either don't pay a lot for it, or do your investigations to make sure it's a, a true World War II era folder. But with that said, you can find Type 38 carbines quite easily, and they really don't fetch a whole lot more than the rifles. So, you're looking probably in the 400 to 600 range, depending on style numbers, condition, mum, etc. And they're actually fun little shooters because even though they're quite light, short and handy, the 6.5 cartridge is not punishing. So it's definitely a good shooter. And as for the Type 99 here in carbine form, again, I couldn't even tell you an estimate on price because it's an oddball. There are a handful of others out there like it. It really just depends if someone believes it's World War II or a 1950s American conversion. So, obviously if it's an American conversion, something like this is just worth a couple of hundred bucks. Maybe 300 just for oddity. But if it's World War II original and someone had a way of authenticating it, well, again, whatever someone asks. But authenticating would be the hard part. Yeah, I, again, not a whole lot new to tell you. Just felt like putting the carbines out since I had already talked about the rifles, so it just didn't seem fair since carbines were a major part of the uh, Japanese arsenal beginning with the Murata in 1894 and running through at least 1944 when Mukden turned out its last Type 38 carbine. I will talk about some of the more unusual conversions and stuff like the Type 38 cavalry rifle in another video. This one I thought was full enough with four guns so we'll leave it at that. Again, I'd really like to hear what you own, how you got it, bonus points if it's a family member that brought it back from the war, and as I've said in many other videos, what's neat about Japanese guns, one of the neat things, most all we have are true, authentic vet bringbacks, so they have a pretty good uh, credence to them. Alrighty guys, well I appreciate you just kind of hanging out with me tonight. Anything, please just post it below. As always, if you'd like to help support the channel, please check out the link to our Patreon page. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe, and all that other good stuff. Jan and I both will catch you very soon. Next time.